Hello, my name is Rich Lilly from Project Leadership Associates. Today we're going to be talking about disaster recovery to Azure. We'll be focusing on some of the common disaster recovery challenges that organizations face today. One of them looks at things like application disaster recovery. What happens if an application fails? Do we fail that within a single data center? Do we fail that to another location? Do we fail that to a service provider? One of the common challenges we face today. One of the other challenges we face today is looking at failing over a data center between different geographical regions. This can typically be one of the most painful things uh, an environment fit focuses and typically something that most organizations are afraid to do. Uh, we'll talk about how we can ease some of that with some of Microsoft's Azure solutions. One of the other common challenges that organizations face today as well is loss of connectivity from their end users. This can typically affect business continuity processes and how end users work, especially mobile users in different environments, whether this be a different physical region or whether this be their home office. Office. Why is now a good time to look at disaster recovery? Specifically, disaster recovery has been historically challenging. There have been complicated solutions involving multiple tiers of data and storage and multiple teams, uh, as well as the, the technology in order to initiate that failover and specifically the most difficult fail back. We also look at having end-to-end -end planning and design. So this can typically take, be one of the most painful parts, especially when it comes to failing over various services and making sure they're up and operational, even though a disaster may, may not have occurred. We also look at one of the most significant components being cost, uh, specifically the capital expenditure requirements to invest in a disaster recovery site of a similar scale to your primary site can typically be a very large cost. We look at compute, we look at network, we look at backup, we look at storage. Those are typically some of the largest costs organizations suffer. So when we look at some of the solutions that exist today, service providers such as Microsoft and some other competitive solutions already build a lot of these environments to scale. So why not leverage a piece of that pie versus having to build your own from scratch? Um, there's a both service provider model as well as a Microsoft model. Both these models offer options for organizations today. We also look at being able to deploy intelligent DR uh, in order to mitigate cost. Being able to fail over and fail back and even test this process is extremely important and typically one that's overlooked in a lot of organizations today. We look at what Microsoft offers from a disaster recovery stack today. Typically when we look at the Microsoft solution stack, we look at some of the, the integrated applications, uh, we look at the uh, IAS, the websites, and we look at things like SQL. A lot of these have inbox solutions for disaster recovery, such as DFSR for file, such as website failover, or network load balancing for sites, or such as solutions such as SQL Always On. Now what do we do to target solutions outside that stack? Now we have to look at actually replicating these machines, typically virtual machines, uh, from one site to another, and we have to find a solution to do that effectively. Uh, when we try to do that between two own sites, there can typically be a high cost, and we have to own and predict what that capex is going to be that secondary site, and we have to eat that cost as an organization. So again, why can't we leverage solutions such as compute, storage, and network that service providers such as Microsoft Azure offer today? Some of this can be done in various different manners. So we look at things such as VM replication with Microsoft's Hyper-V replica solution. This is something that came around in Server 2012 and now is even in improved in Server 2012 R2. We also even look at the ability to do third-party storage replication or other replication solutions as well. So we look at being able to do and orchestrate this um, in a consistent manner. So Microsoft offers solutions such as Azure Site Recovery, which allow us to fail over and create test plans and production plans to fail these services over. This makes disaster recovery recovery simpler as well as fail back and the overall process much more streamlined. Now we look at the actual technology that's involved with this. A lot of this is built on the Microsoft Hyper-V Replica platform. So what Hyper-V Replica does is allow it supports a point-in-time replication of virtual machines from one site to another site. That can either be an own site or now even replicating it to Microsoft's public cloud solution, Azure. This allows for various different ways to fail resources over. This allows for planned failover and an instance where we know we want to do, say, a test disaster recovery failover, and also unplanned failover as well. So if we want to bring up a resource after an unplanned failover, maybe a natural disaster or a power outage, we can bring back these services from a specific point in time. We also have the option of failing over between different sites and injecting an IP address. So what this means is um, being able to route in those remote sites and making failover and fail back much easier. Uh, most other solutions that exist on the market today don't allow this level of, of integration without significant uh, impact to implementation. 
In Server 2012 R2, uh, there are changes that were made to improve Hyper-V Replica. Things like reduction in I.O. overhead, support for tertiary replication locations, so now we can take this to even a third location or a third region, region in Azure, for instance. We're also looking at being able to choose the replication interval. It's down as low as 30 seconds, uh, meeting a lot of the business requirements that exist out there today. We also look at being able to do things with multi-VM applications, and potentially they're very complex, right? We have these two or three tier applications that have multiple services and multiple servers that are part of each one of those service lines. So replicating these in an efficient manner uh, is something that Microsoft does extremely well with some of these failover plans and creating the, the concept of groups as well. One of the first things we focus on is leveraging a ASR, Azure Site Recovery, for failover between owned sites. So you may have a production data center as well as a disaster recovery data center that exists today. What if I want to be able to replicate data and coordinate that failover between sites? I've already realized that investment. I'm in year two or year three of that. I'd, I'm not necessarily ready to move to the cloud for my secondary failover today. Um, Azure Site Recovery can coordinate that entire failover today. Uh, one of the important points to note is no actual data traverses to the cloud. So for organizations that are cloud sensitive, uh, this can be a primary solution and a great solution for uh, implementing this in your environment today. Azure Site Recovery can be leveraged, as I mentioned, from an on-prem to an on-prem solution. This is leveraging various agents from both a virtual machine manager perspective, which is managing the entire operation, as well as the Hyper-V perspective. Microsoft just announced as well last week that they are going to be focusing on small business and be able to leverage Hyper-V Replica without virtual machine manager as well. We also have the option of extending this to a third or tertiary site as well. So if we want to extend this to a third owned data center or extend this to Azure, we have the option of doing so uh, and, and being able to leverage even a further amount of disaster recovery in our environment. We also have now have an option for disaster recovery site to Azure directly. So this means no interim to an owned data center. So the advantage here is we can maintain the same level of failover and capabilities as an on-premises data center, but to an own cloud solution. One of the big benefits here is we're not paying for the capital to spin this environment up in a disaster recovery site. We have the ability to keep this environment completely powered down. And as we know with the public cloud model, we're only paying as we go. So when this environment is completely po powered down, there is no cost to the organization other than uh, the, um, the storage to store that data. So this is a big advantage for, for most organizations. We're not having to predict that compute cost uh, for, for the organization. So when we look at different options and be able to fail over to a public cloud solution like Microsoft's Azure, we ask six major questions today. One, you know, we want to make sure that we meet the disaster recovery goals of the organization. So ultimately aligning the technology with the business requirements is one of the most important pieces. We also want to understand and support all the DC operations when they fail over to the site as well. So when it comes down to monitoring or supporting a service that faces an end user or a consumer of the organization, understanding this and what the risk is is important as well. We also need to look at meeting data sovereignty laws. So when it comes to replicating data across territories, the US to UK, UK to US, uh, there can be some data sovereignty concerns. So understanding the business goals and where that business is allowed to do business and data is, is able to sit based on their own internal or client, uh, client recommendations is important as well. We also look at is it important uh, is the data of your location important as well? So is the data does the data have to be close to the clients that are accessing it? Uh, does it matter that it's across regions or across international territories as well? Uh, this can sometimes affect overall application performance and latency as well. We also look at the amount of data lost. So this is important. We look at common factors like RTO and RPO. The other thing and final thing we want to look at, especially looking at our standard operating procedures. Do we want to leverage our own internal procedures today, which are typically much more manual? Or do we want to look at actual technical failover and, and offering a solution such as Azure Site Recovery that build in a lot of these processes today? Let's take a look at a couple of the options and how they're presented today. Today we're going to be looking at configuring Azure Site Recovery for a couple different scenarios. So one will actually look at the Azure portal. So here we have our Microsoft Azure portal. We go under our Recovery Services pane. We can see I've already got a PLA Dash Lab here, Azure Site Recovery Vault. Now there's a handful of different ways to set up recovery. One we look at between an on-premises VMM site in Azure. We look at between two owned VMM sites. So this is where I own both data centers. We look at an on-premise Hyper-V site and Azure and we look at potentially VMware or VMM sites with SAN in the new VNext or Server, Server 10 uh, solution as well. So a handful of steps that we need to follow. We look at things like preparing our VMM servers as well as our Hyper-V hosts with a specific registration key as well as a small provider that gets installed on each. We then need to prepare our resources.
resources. So when we look at our resources specifically, uh, we need to go ahead and map our various network locations. So once we have registered objects, we're going to go ahead and map our networks in each region. So in this case, you can see we're mapping our sources, our on-premises VMM server. We look at mapping our Microsoft Azure network. So you can see here as it loads, it gives me a handful of networks. And you can see I've already mapped my on-premises cloud networks to my Azure lab network specifically. We then also look at creating a specific recovery plan. So when we create a recovery plan, this recovery plan looks at integrating various services into our failover process. So today we have one that's built by default from just a single virtual machine. And in this case, we have the option to include things like manual actions, such as emails to someone to perform a manual step, or a scripted action that needs to be performed as well. What's important here is to identify specifically which components of the cloud we want to fail over. In most cases, that may not be everything. This may be a component where we may want to look at defining different tiers of failover applications, whether something is a tier one, a tier two, or a tier three. Now we're going to look at actually configuring Azure Site Recovery for the options that we just talked about. So one, we'll look at specifically uh, the, the options that exist in Azure Site Recovery today. So one, we look at on-premises VMM site to Azure. We look at uh, uh, VMM sites between two different own data centers. We also look at a Hyper-V site, which isn't actually looking to integrate with VMM, but independently a Hyper-V in implementation uh, to Azure. We also look at on-premises VMware sites, as well as what's new in the next version of server that's coming out, uh, VMM sites with SAN replication. Now to actually go ahead and configure these solutions, we'll go ahead and look at uh, a provider that's already been loaded in here. So our virtual machine manager server and our primary data, data center has already been loaded in, and we want to replicate this to Azure. So I've got my tenant cloud here specifically. We're going to dive in, and then we're going to choose which VMs we want to, we want to replicate over to Azure. In this case, I've just got one virtual machine you can see is already configured. I have the option of adding additional virtual machines. Uh, you can see here I even have the option of failing over this individual VM or test failing over this individual VM from this pane as well. Now, if I click on that virtual machine, you can see it maps to our Azure properties. So here you can see the name it would bring up in Azure, as well as the size and the network that comes up as well. This is all very important for understanding exactly how we fill these resources over. And again, these resources will only be powered on and charged uh, at time of delivery or time of failover. We also look at, and back up here, we look at our recovery plan specifically. So once we've defined those virtual machines, we have the option of creating a recovery plan, which you can see here. With our recovery plan, you can see we have just a single group here. Now this is really important to look at specific tiers of applications. We may have different failover uh, sets for our tier one, our tier two, or our tier three applications. As you can see, we also have the option of in integrating scripts as well as manual actions that may need to be performed as well. In order to initiate a failover from here, I can simply do a full failover, a test failover, or can even initiate automated failover. This would fail over all resources in this plan in an automated or non-automated fashion. Thank you for attending our session today on Disaster Recovery to Azure. My name is Rich Lilly. You can reach me for any questions at rlilly at projectleadership.net or on Twitter at at Rich Lilly. Thank you.